Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from the Federal University of Minas Gerais. And in the last class, we saw that a data flow analysis can be seen as a system of equations. In this class, we will see how we can solve these equations. Before we talk about efficiency, let's talk about a very simple way to solve them. Here they are, the 12 equations that we had seen for reaching definitions in our last class as an example. Let's do the following to solve them. Pick them all and throw them into a bag. That's just a thought experiment, by the way. The bag is a metaphor for a set. Anyways, put those equations all in a set. Then pick one of them from the set and evaluate it. If the evaluation of this equation causes any in or out set uh, to change, then pick all the equations and put them back into the bag. Put everything back into the bag. If the evaluation of the equation does not cause anything to change, I mean, uh, its in or out set remains the same, then leave it out. Keep repeating this procedure until the bag is act. I'm giving you pseudocode for this algorithm here. If you want, you can stop the video and then read the pseudocode, but the idea is simple. Keep evaluating the equations until the in and out sets stop changing. But there is a very important question here. Does this method terminate? This question is truly important. And for now, we will leave it aside. I will postpone the answer to this question. We will have a class all about it. For now, let's try to analyze the complexity of this approach. This algorithm, by the way, is called chaotic iterations. And to show that it terminates, we need to reason a bit about some of its properties. Indeed, not every possible way to instanti instantiate chaotic iterations will always terminate. We need to reason about the properties of the data that's being manipulated. But again, that's a subject for a discussion a few classes away from now. For now, let's focus on the complexity of the algorithm. I'm refining the pseudocode. That's something closer to what an implementation would look like. Again, perhaps you could stop the video and then you can try to read the pseudocode. This algorithm generalizes the equations. Notice that these equations might remove elements from a set. I'm calling this set of elements that must be removed the kill set of the equation. Some equations can also add elements to the final out set. I'm calling these elements the death of that equation. Anyways, can you try to figure out the complexity of this algorithm? That's a bit tricky. If you want, you can try to think about the question. I will answer it in the next slides anyway. To figure out the complexity of this algorithm, let's try to answer five questions, one at a time. First, assuming that you have any variables in the program and about the same number of instructions, how many times can this first loop iterate? You may try to answer it. I will provide an answer later. And how many times can this inner loop iterate? This should be an easy question. I'm considering here that example with the six program points, but we can imagine that here I have as many points as I have instructions in the CFG of the program. What's the complexity to implement such union, by the way? Remember that we can solve um, any definition points in the program and it's just a symbol, a variable to give names to things. And how many predecessors can a node have? In other words, how many set unions we might have to perform when computing the merging of information? Putting this all together, would you like to try to figure out the complexity of this code? It helps to have a piece of paper. But let's see. The repeat loop iterates whenever some in or out set changes. If we have any variables and any instructions, then each set can have up to n variables, and we have n sets. Thus, 
In the worst case, they can change by adding one element into one set each time. That gives us n squared iterations. The inner for loop iterates once for each in and out set. We have one of these for uh, every instruction, so we have n iterations. To implement set union, we can do it in linear time on the size of the set. But our sets can have at most n elements, which are the definition points in the program. That is, the instructions. So each set operation, union in this case, runs in O of n, where n is the number of instructions. In the worst case, we can imagine that each instruction is the predecessor of each other instruction. Well, this kind of program does not really exist, but that's just an exercise on the worst case complexity of the algorithm. In this case, we have O of n predecessors per instruction. Putting it all together, we end up with n to the fifth power. Well, almost nothing that really matters in computer science has this complexity. And here we are really getting a pretty loose upper quora. Indeed, if we order the nodes properly, we will never iterate more than twice or at most three times on the program. Things stop changing real fast. In the next class, we will talk a bit about ordering. Concerning this round-robin traverse of the instructions, there is not much that we can do. Well, there is, but for now, let's leave it as linear. About the set operations, typically these sets are small, so we can imagine that we can join them in constant time. We can also assume that the control flow graph of a program is sparse. So each branch has at most two successors, and each node has at most uh, two predecessors. That's a pretty reasonable assumption. And in the end, we get an algorithm that, for all the purposes, runs in linear time on the number of instructions in the program. So, although the theoretical complexity is high, the practical complexity is pretty okay. For instance, if we run two typical data flow analyses, we do get linear behavior empirically. Here I'm showing intended flow analysis and points to analysis. Uh, we will talk more about these analyses much later in this course, but we will talk about them. In case you want to take a look into these experiments, uh, they came from this paper from 2011. Anyways, although chaotic iterations can be a viable alternative to implementing data flow analysis, there are still many ways to speed it up. Chaotic iterations will be our starting point, and we shall refine it in the next few classes. Until there, feel free to write me with questions or comments, and thank you for watching.